Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode I would like to take one of your requests. So someone asked me in the comment section, could you please explain how a circling approach is performed on the A320 series? Yeah, we can certainly do that. I have to say though, a circling approach is something that is slowly but surely dying out. Um, we have some airports where circling approaches used to be common, but uh, over time airports have switched to procedures and we actually have a lot of these procedures hard programmed into the FMS. So even though it used to be a visual maneuver, we simply let the autopilot fly the whole thing. It takes you straight to the runway and when the runway is uh, ahead of you, you switch off the autopilot and then just land the aircraft. So a circling approach in the traditional sense, to be honest with you, I've never flown one in the real world. We used to have them, but this was a long time ago. In any case, there may be some parts of the world where this is still done. Here in Europe, I honestly can't think of an airport where we still do this. Like I said, we have everything programmed into the FMS and therefore we just activate the approach in the MCDU and let the autopilot do its thing. But nevertheless, as a pilot, you need to know how a circling approach works, how to fly it. So we actually still practice this in our sim sessions. And so I'm gonna show you how it's all done. So we'll start with what it is, how it works, and then I will show you how to set it all up in the cockpit. And then at the end, we'll actually fly a proper circling approach here into Graz in Austria. Okay, so just as I mentioned right now, we are in Graz in Austria. And the reason why I'm taking you here is because here a circling approach would actually make a lot of sense. I've flown to Graz a couple of times and the way it works, you have one single runway here. This is runway 34, runway 16. And as you can see here, there's quite a bit of terrain on this side. As a result, all the approaches are from the south, so we always land on runway 34, and all departures are on runway 16, so we always take off heading south. There's an ILS onto runway 34, but there's obviously no ILS coming from the north because of all the mountains here. So in today's scenario, we imagine that there is wind from the south and it is above the tailwind limit of the A320. So we cannot land on this runway here. We cannot land on 3.4. We need to land from the north. But there is no ILS. There is an RMP approach actually coming from the north, but we'll ignore that for now. So what we'll do, we'll fly the ILS. We go down to a circuit altitude. Then we break off to the right. We'll fly parallel to the runway and then we'll turn inbound here and fly a, a, an approach onto runway 16. That's the basic idea. Now I'm gonna talk you through it all, how it's supposed to work, and then I'll show you how to set it all up in the cockpit. Okay, so here we have the ILS chart for runway 34 in Graz, and I hope you can see my mouse. So the idea is that you come in and you fly an ILS. On the secondary flight plan, you prepare a landing on runway 16. You don't put in an approach, you just put in runway 16 and maybe you will put in an extended center line or as, in, as I like to do also at the threshold, you put in a three mile circle. I'm gonna explain to you why in a minute. So you fly the ILS, you need to fly it with gear down, flaps three, and you fly the ILS down to the circling altitude. Now the circling altitude is sometimes uh, published here on the chart. In this case, it isn't. If it isn't, you simply look at the runway altitude. So this is 1,100 feet, and then you add 1,000 feet. So our circling altitude is going to be 2,100 feet. When you reach 2,100 feet, 
you stop the approach and you turn to either left or right by 45 degrees. Now because I'm sitting on the left, we'll be turning right so I can keep visual contact with the runway. So you do a 45 degree turn. Once the wings are level, you start the timer and you time 30 seconds. Once 30 seconds are up, you go downwind again and then you wait till you are abeam the threshold. Once you are abeam the threshold, you start the timer again. And for every 100 feet that you are above ground, you need to fly 3 seconds. So in our case, we'll just fly 30 seconds. Now be aware if you have a lot of tailwind or headwind, you need to adjust for that because that's going to push you either further away or slow you down whilst you fly downwind. If you're not sure, you should be at around about 45 degrees from the threshold you are landing at when you start your turn. So once the 30 seconds are up and you are around 45 degrees from the threshold, you do a 25 degree bank turn. Once you visual and have all the references, you start descending, you go to flaps full, do the landing checklist and come in to land. So doesn't sound too difficult, but there's quite a few things you need to consider. First of all, what you're flying here is a track, not a heading. So you need to set that up in the cockpit uh, because the wind is going to blow you around. So we want the aircraft to fly a track. Secondly, the go around. So as you can see here, if you fly the ILS and you need to do a go around, then you just turn here to the right and fly outbound. If you would come from the other side, I can tell you the go around is basically straight out and then a turn. So what do you do if you're on the downwind and you need to do a go around? Because you can neither do this nor that really. So for that, you need to make a plan and you need to make a plan in your head. And this needs to be briefed with your colleague at which point you switch from this go around to the other go around. And that would be the moment where you activate the secondary flight plan. Uh, this is very important that both pilots are aware of that switch because that will change the go around you are going to perform in case you need to. The other thing that's important is once you leave the ILS, you must be visual with the runway at any time. If you lose visual contact with the runway, you immediately need to perform a go around. So this is a visual maneuver, even though you can fly it with the autopilot up to a certain point. So that's the other thing that is really important. And I think with that, we have discussed the theory. Now let's go into the cockpit and I'll show you how to set it all up. Okay, we've just taken off from Graz. We're just gonna be hanging around here near the ILS. And before we come back, I'm gonna talk you through how all of this works in the cockpit. So on the flight plan page, we have our ILS onto runway 34. It's called 34 Center because Graz has two grass strips left and right, but we're obviously not going to be landing on a grass strip. So we're flying the ILS. And like I said, we need to fly this with gear down flaps three. Once we reach 2100 feet, you need to level off. You simply press the VS button and that will level off the aircraft. Then we need to turn to the right by 45 degrees. So this needs to be a track, not a heading. So you need to switch here to track and then we dial in the track that we need. Once the wings are level, you start the timer and you wait for 30 seconds. Once 30 seconds are up, you turn on the downwind, which is essentially the same as the ILS inbound track. At this point, I would switch to the secondary flight plan. The secondary flight plan needs to be prepared beforehand, of course. So we can do that now. Secondary, copy active. We change the runway. So we'll be landing on runway 16 center. You don't put in an approach, just the runway. No star, and that's it. 
There will be a discontinuity in the secondary flight plan. That's fine. Leave it in. So that's the secondary prepared. We would activate the secondary and then we would fly downwind. And that would be that prepared. Once you are beam, you start the timer or reset it. Wait 30 seconds or depending on the wind, adjust a little bit for that. And uh, once that is done, you essentially fly outbound. You keep a visual with the runway, which you know here on the 2D screen is actually very difficult. Once the 30 seconds are up, you go into a 25 degree bank and start the turn. In the real world, we would just look outside and see the runway. In the sim, I find it really difficult, and this is why I usually draw an extended center line, so I have an idea where the runway is, and I draw a circle of three nautical miles. First of all, this is the circling area, so the airports are designed in a way that you are going to be safe within that area, and secondly, it gives me a target. So where the circle meets the extended center line, I want to be at roughly 1000 feet and that should work out nicely. So then I'll fly towards the runway, we do the landing checklist, go to flaps full and land the aircraft. You can do flaps full a bit earlier if you want to, it depends really on yeah, how you like to configure the aircraft. And that is essentially how we set it all up, like I said, the important thing is that you don't forget to switch to track and that you decide when exactly you're going to switch from primary to secondary flight plan because that decides which go around you're going to fly for example should you lose any visual contact with the runway and that's basically it you can fly all this with autopilot up to the final turn then the autopilot and flight director need to be switched off so the final turn has to be flown manually and yeah that's essentially it i can't think of anything else uh, i think i've discussed everything so let's try and actually do this now okay we are on the localizer the glide path is coming in i will go to manage speed now and we put down the gear so that means we are now at uh, flaps three gear down and the managed speed will mean that we'll be flying it around about F speed, which is exactly what is expected to us. Glide slope star, so that means the aircraft is now going to descend. We are going to send, uh, sorry, we are going to set an altitude of 2,100 feet. There we are. So we're in the right configuration and for this moment in time we keep flying the ILS and in case of go-round we'll just fly the go-round procedure as here on the screen. So that's all good. We are ready at 2700 feet so we need to get ready now. The inbound track by the way is 344 degrees. So if my old brain doesn't deceive me, we need to turn to the right onto a heading of 029 and we need to hold that for 30 seconds. You can see the mountains in the background, here's the runway, so uh, weather is good and we have almost no wind, so that's all great. Okay, 2100 feet, we are pull VS, put it to zero, come on. We switch to track and we turn on to 029. Let's do that now. There we are. We're a little bit low, I'm gonna correct for that. There we are, wings level, start the timer. We now fly this track for 30 seconds. Okay, 25 seconds. We can start the turn back to 344. At this point I would no longer fly the go around of the ILS, so we can do secondary, activate secondary, we have the other runway in there, and I would 
go here onto the fix page if it lets me OWG16 center and we do 344 four. and that will draw a nice line okay so we are a beam start the clock 30 seconds uh, let's reset come on okay so let's do 28 seconds in the meantime maybe I have time let's do a uh, three radios yeah that'll do okay 28 seconds are up autopilot off flight directors off we'll turn to the left 25 degrees bank make sure you don't descend or climb for the time being I'm already going on to flaps full and we'll start a nice shallow descent here don't see sink. if we can get visual like you see it's very don't difficult sink. Um, don't sink very difficult with the uh, sim in a two day screen don't forget you're very low so don't descend too much don't sink so we overcooked that a bit don't sink I can see one red three don't white sink. so we descend a bit don't sink don't sink there we are don't not sink. the best let's be honest <laughs> so sink. here we go we line up with the runway landing checklist Ikamimo landing new blue don't readying sink. and cabin is ready don't and sink. from here we would just perform a landing I mean to be honest for me this would be a go around but uh, luckily we're in the sim so don't yeah sink. it's a problem because in the sim you s essentially don't just look sink. out the side window and you do nothing else you actually never don't look sink. outside to the front you keep the runway don't in sink. your visual focus the Do entire time uh, so you know exactly where the runway is where sink. you are and you constantly correct uh, on the sink. 2d screen this is incredibly difficult Don't so sink. I find flying here visual stuff Don't yeah I find sink. it quite difficult I actually have a VR headset but uh, I have a H um, a reverb G2 and as you probably know reverse on they will stop working soon thanks to Microsoft and HP which is a shame because I really enjoy the headset but um, yeah there you go so we'll have to think of something else reverse off manual braking and that's how we do that so yeah the the final turn wasn't very nice uh, this would probably have been a go around in the real world but I hope you get a rough idea of how this is supposed to work like I said it's a visual maneuver so you should be visual with the runway at all times and uh, think when you want to fly which go around so if you're on the downwind I would essentially just initiate a turn to the left and then fly over the runway and follow the go around procedure for the approach from the north so that's how I would do that these are things you need to brief with your colleague so you're both aware of what's going on and you need to brief the exact point from where you're gonna switch from the go around to the north uh, to the south so that's how it's done um, it's a bit of workload but you know as you can see it's not that big a deal like I said I've never done this in the real world uh, we have procedures for this now they're all hard programmed hardwired into the MCDU we just activate the MCDU and it would fly all of this what I've just done on autopilot and that's essentially it so I hope uh, this is what you had in mind when uh, you asked me to talk about circling approaches I hope you found it useful and yeah I would look forward to seeing you again in the next one until then all the best bye bye